Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. This is the first in a two-part video about acoustic homing torpedoes and the World War II countermeasures to defeat them. In the first part, Paul Ferrace here from USS Cod is going to tell us about acoustic homing torpedoes. And then in the second part, you're going to head over to his channel and watch me tell, talk about the uh, countermeasures that are used against them. So the German U-boats, uh, in their effort to increase their lethality against the Allied merchant fleet, they, uh, the, 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 the battle uh, uh, plan for U-boats was to get inside the convoy and attack from within, uh, which is a big problem. You've got fast-moving destroyers or destroyer escorts out on the uh, perimeter, but if the wolf is already in the uh, herd of sheep, that makes finding and killing the wolf that much harder. Um, but uh, with our advanced technology, uh, improving sonars, uh, that becomes less and less viable. So the Germans are trying to stand further off and deliver death to the convoys from a distance. Um, standard torpedoes can do that, uh, but they often don't have enough time to set up a good uh, firing solution. Uh, so the Germans, again, no slouches uh, are they in technology, develop uh, an acoustic homing torpedo, which you would basically set fire toward the, uh, uh, the, the ship, uh, the convoys, and we had some massive convoys. How did it work with your own boat's noise? Do you have the propellers running or do you have to shut that down? Well, they're, they're, the, the, the homing torpedoes, whether they're ours or Germans, they're listening for that cavitation, that whoosh, whoosh, whoosh of the propellers. So don't worry about a precision setup. Fire uh, an acoustic torpedo and it gets into the nest and finds the loudest noise. What about your own pro uh, submarine's propellers? It's, it's going away from you very quickly. Okay. And, uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's not an omnidirectional. Um, so late in the war, we American submarines uh, go to sea with the Mark 27 motto Cutie. Now the Cutie is a, an, a lengthened, improved, or modified Mark 24 Fido, the aerial mine. Now it's called an aerial mine as part of the security cover. It's a torpedo. It's got the torpedo propeller, it's got a propeller, the fins on the back, but that's hidden in a wooden box. Mm -hmm. And the components really only come together near the site of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Again, for security reasons. And, and the Mark tw uh, 24 Fido mine, okay. or torpedo, um, it's not to be used if the pilot is not certain that he's attacking only one U-boat or Japanese ship, because uh, if, there is a, if there's several other U-boats, we don't want them to see a torpedo being dropped on, a, on their, their, their guys, because they would report back and the countermeasures would be too simple to introduce. Because again, these are advanced weapons for the time, but it's very simple. They're just steering toward the loudest noise. And that's a segue for your part, but so so COD has uh, uh, we take the, the the Fido design and adapt it to uh, a submarine as a defensive weapon, because in the American submarine campaign, one of our problems is we're getting closer and closer to the uh, Japanese home islands or the littorals. Uh, water is shallow, which is very limiting to your uh, evasion capabilities. So having in the after torpedo room uh, an acoustic homing torpedo that if things get hairy, you go deep as you can, below 100 feet, you go very quiet and let this swim out of the tube and hopefully it's going to find the, uh, the surface ship that's harassing you and it's carrying a 75 pound HBX warhead. When you say let it swim out of the tube, you, you don't mean like fire with the air slug, you just let it. Yes, because of course that air slug would deafen the sound head. Yeah, again, um, so COD carried uh, a Mark 27 cutie on the last couple of patrols. In fact, in a situation we deployed one mm -hmm. and according to uh, uh, my curator, Evan, uh, the results came back it didn't work. 
Luckily, we got home uh, despite that uh, uh, failure. Uh, but let it be uh, remembered that the last Japanese ship lost in World War II was lost to a cutie fired by the Torsk. Now, it was the second from the last torpedo fired. Torsk was being harassed by a coastal defense ship mm -hmm. off the home islands, uh, and she launched a cutie, and it had a 15-minute battery life. Well, after 20 minutes, there's no boom, uh, and the Japanese ship is still harassing them. So they load up a, uh, well, I'm sure it was already loaded. They had a Mark 28, a full-size acoustic homing torpedo. So they took the, the homing device from, uh, from the cutie and put it on a full-size torpedo. They launched that at the ship. Now the ship sees that coming in the water and hits the gas, if you will, yeah. and does a radical turn. Well, that creates enough noise. Uh, the previously launched cutie wakes up and hits them and sinks them. So, I, you know, uh, hats off. Then that's why Torsk uh, it really has that 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 incredible claim to sink the last uh, uh, ship. In fact, it's it fires the last torpedo that sinks an enemy ship. Period for the United States. Let's hope it stays that way. And uh, Torsk is a museum ship that you can visit in Baltimore's Inner Harbor. Absolutely. Um, but again, as I said, the. Uh, um, uh, the, the Mark uh, 27 Motto Cutie, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, this, it's this long. Yeah. And we can carry two on a skid. Um, now, that torpedo uh, basic design is morphed into the Mark 27 Mod 4, introduced in 1950. And that is the first torpedo that we have, or uh, frankly, that anybody has, that can engage an enemy submarine submerged. So they radically improve its, its detection capability, and it's no longer just a swimming toward the loudest noise on the surface. It has the ability to run out at a certain safe distance um, on a mechanical gyro heading, and then the uh, acoustic warhead takes over, the acoustic seeker, and now it's looking for that submerged submarine, but that's 1950. And that torpedo really gives uh, the American submarine force, its first weapon that it can deal with an enemy submarine submerged. Prior to that, you had like a surface ship, you had to engage them on the surface, which diesel boats are always on the surface. Um, but if he if he's a, detects you or he's maybe spooked, he's going to dive and then you don't have the ability to attack him. But in 1950 with this Mark 27 Mod 4, now we can go after him. Uh, but um, yeah, again, the, the, the countermeasures are too simple and uh, I'm, I'm really fascinated to hear your description of what uh, our countermeasure is, but that's in part two. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below to support USS Slater in Albany, New York, the ship that we filmed this video on. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and our channel. And you can support USS Cod by going over to their channel and watching part two. Thanks for watching.